All right, this is second grade, module seven, lesson six. And in this lesson, students are going to be recognizing coins, both the heads and the tails, because that's kind of important. You gotta recognize both sides. And they're gonna be adding up their total value. So let's get started. So one of the things I would do is, man, the best, probably the best way for students to be learning about coins is to be playing with coins and just let them play with coins, coin games, all as much as you can. Um, but specifically, one of the things we want to talk about is we want to help students recognize uh, the heads and the tails of each of the coins. So you've got, of course, your pennies, your nickels, your dimes, and your quarters. Now, what's kind of interesting right nowadays is uh, there's a variety of different nickels out there on the market, and there's a variety of different quarters, like we have the state's quarters out there on the market. And so that's going to make it a little tricky for us teachers to help students recognize all of the different kinds of coins, but uh, I think they could figure it out. And now the other thing is, when we are adding coins, we're going to talk about how it might make life easier if we take the coins that we're trying to add up, oh, let's say that much, and we want to organize them from the greatest value, way over here, to the least value, all right? And it doesn't have to be in a perfect row, but I'm going to do that. And uh, so I've grabbed, you'll notice I've grabbed some heads and tails of all of the coins here. And if we want to add up this value of coin, coins, um, what we would do is we'd say, okay, well, um, here's 25 plus 25. We want students to be learning how to add uh, quarters. 25 plus 25 is 50, plus another 25 is 75, etc. So in this case, 25 and 25, we want students to recognize as 50. Of course, you can always, kind of a neat idea, is you can always connect that to the quarter of a, a clock. So you could say, well, here's 25% plus 25%, and that equals 50%. So you, you could do it that way. How you connect uh, for uh, as a mnemonic for our students to learn that two quarters is equal to 50 cents, totally up to you. But let's go. So we've got 25 and 25, there's 50, plus another 10 is 60, plus 5 makes 65, plus 1, 2, 3, so 65, 66, 67, 68. So you've got a variety of ways that you can help students count these. Another idea might be to specifically label the literal values like this and then you can add 25 and 25 is 50 plus 10 is 60 plus 5 is 65 plus 66 67 68 another idea that you can do is you can uh, list these uh, as like kind of like cumulative so you could say well I'm going to start with 25 now I have 50 now I have 60, now I have 65, now I have 66, 67, 68. So there's another way that students might need uh, as a scaffold, a temporary scaffold, because, of course, eventually we want students to be able to add all of these in their head, at least kind of count up in their head. So here, uh, we've already been given the coins in order from the greatest value to the least value. And we want our students to just kind of count. And then, of course, we want them to use the proper symbol up here. So uh, here's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So you'd say, oh, okay, that's going to be 9 cents. All right, and then, oh, let's do 4 down here. So you've got 10, and then plus 10 more. So these two nickels, we want students to kind of use the commutative property and the associative property and say, well, let's add these two nickels together. That's 10. So 10 plus 10 is 20, 21, 22, 23. So we've got 23 cents like that. Now, one of the interesting things that's kind of a little interesting is when we want to say 23 cents versus 23 dollars, it's always interesting, and I, even in my middle school students that, that I'm, I teach, 
they get this backwards. 23 cents is written 23 cents. The, the numbers and the letters are in the same order as the number and the symbol. However, $23 is written this way. And I can't tell you how many sixth graders even want to put $23 like that. And of course, that's silly. We write it like that. So it's a little counterintuitive that this gets swapped, whereas the sense stays kind of in the same order. That's a little interesting. Just a little bit of a heads up to you uh, parents and teachers. And the last slide. Here we want students to be able to get this pile of coins, and without rearranging them, we want students to be able to kind of bounce around, essentially using the commutative property, to add all of these coins uh, from in order from the greatest value to the least value, but without first organizing the coins. So we've got 75, um, 75 cents because 3 quarters is 75 cents. That's kind of one of those things that students are going to have to memorize. So you've got 75 cents, 85, 95, 96, 97. So of course we're going to write 97 cents. And then last one, way over here, we're going to start with a quarter, because that makes it easy. So we've got 25, and then we've got 35, 45, 55, 65, 66, 67, 68. So we've got 68 cents. Now what's the best thing for you parents and teachers to do? Really, instead of giving students a worksheet, just give them coins and say, hey, uh, I want you to count out 38 cents for me, or here, now count out 54 cents for me, or here's a pile of coins. Tell me how much money I have. And that wraps up a short one. Second grade, module seven, lesson six, recognizing coins, both heads and tails, and counting their value.